Hey everyone, this is a KVM switch from T-Smart or TE-Smart and actually I have two computers and I'm regularly switching between them for gaming, programming and video editing and so on paper this KVM switch seems completely perfect because it has a load of features that I'll talk about in just one minute. So in this video I wanted to talk about those features and actually why this is a really cool sounding KVM switch. Then I'm going to do a full unboxing of this switch and then I'm actually going to show how you can set it up throughout the unboxing and give you some tips along the way. So let's get cracking with the actual product features of this KVM switch. So this is a two computer, two monitor KVM switch, but they do also sell one with three monitor support. But I've only got two monitors, so this was fine for me. And on paper, it's got really impressive specs, supporting up to 8K resolutions at 60 hertz or 144 hertz at 4K, which is great because that's why I game at. And it also supports G-Sync and FreeSync. So when you're actually gaming, you should have less or no, you know, tearing and ghosting issues and things like that, which is really neat. You know, if you had a budget KVM switch, you might not get that. The switch also supports up to 12-bit color depth if you do video editing and stuff, and it has EDID emulation support. So when you switch in between operating systems, as you can see there, you shouldn't have all your programs and desktop icons rearranging themselves and things like that. All your display settings should stay the same. And also you can switch in a few ways, such as with an infrared remote, as you can see from me doing there. You can also use hotkeys and also the physical button on the KVM switch. It also comes with some USB 3 Gen 1 ports for faster USB 3 speeds. So it sounds like a pretty awesome product, let's actually unbox it and take a look. And this is the outer box that you'll actually have, so it says T Smart and the logo. It's got their socials just saying like share and follow us. But other than that, you know, fairly simple, nothing much else there. So let's actually open it up and look at the box. So it firstly says, enjoy. We'd like to thank all some customers. You rock. If you've got any other problems or need any technical support, please contact us. And then this is the rest of the box. So you get a user guide and then loads of other things. So really neat packaging, actually. Um, but first, I'm going to quickly look at this user guide. Then we'll get on with looking at the rest of it. And this is the actual user guide. It supports English, German and Japanese. You can scan the QR code to actually get more information from this support. But this is the actual booklet and, you know, it discusses all of the features, how this supports 8K resolution at 60 hertz, which is always really impressive. That surprises me about this KVM switch. It also discusses what's in the actual box. So you've actually got the KVM switch. Obviously, you've got two cables, USB 3.0, which are actually the data cables between your computer and the KVM switch. It then comes with four DisplayPort cables as well. The remote controls, you can actually switch between your two computers without needing to press the button on the KVM switch if it's you know hard to reach and things like that. It's got the power adapter and then this user manual too. And then, yeah, everything is just listed here, exactly what you've got. It's got an RGB LED strip, which is quite nice in the night. And then here, you you know, you just got the suggested setup. So it's saying here you might want to put your headset and then in the slower USB 2 ports, you might want to put your keyboard and mouse. And then in the other ports, you might want to use things like external hard drives. Nothing stopping you potentially using like a USB 3 hub as well, which which I actually have. And I might try that out because, yeah, it could be quite good if you do need more than, you know, four USB ports. At least you've got that option as well. And then you've got your other ports and actually how you set things up. So essentially you're going to be running, you know, your monitor display port cables into this KVM switch in the outputs. And then your computer, you know, you can run two display port, one or two display port cables, depending on how many you need from your actual computer or your laptop into the KVM switch as well. And then you just use the USB from your computer into the actual KVM switch and then the same thing for the USB to actually get that control. And then this actually discusses the four different ways you can actually switch between the uh, KVM modes. So you can use the physical button on the KVM switch. You can use the included remote control, which we'll look at in a minute, or you can use keyboard and mouse shortcuts as well. So that is that and quite a good user guide, actually, all things considered. You then got the rest of the box. So let's just dive into that. We'll start out with the slightly boring thing. And it's not too boring, obviously, but the actual power. So we can just open that up. But I say it's actually boring. You don't just get the power cable in there, actually, do you? You get, obviously, you do get the power cord. So completely standard. This is a UK based one, but you know, you're going to get one based on the country you live in. And then you actually get your USB data cable. So effectively one end will go into the KVM switch, you can see there, and then the other end will go into your computer and ideally, you know, put it into one of the blue, you know, basically USB 3 ports because that's actually going to be the best for data rates and things like that. And next we come to the 
other bits in the box and there's three other bits. So you've got this, which you probably guess is the remote control, which we'll look at next. Then you've got the KVM switch, which will be that one. And then you've got all of your cables as well. So I'm gonna quickly look at the remote control and the cables, then we'll actually look at the KVM switch because that's the thing that we're all here for. The actual remote control is pretty nice. Not all KVM switches come with it, but you know, often your KVM switch is gonna be you know, in the middle of nowhere where you can't easily get to it. Not necessarily in a drawer, but it might be lower down somewhere and it's harder to actually get to it and press the physical button to actually change between computers. And so it's quite nice that actually TE Smart does include this remote control. Now move on to the cables and then finally the KVM switch. So these are the cables and you get quite a lot with this. So this is a DisplayPort KVM switch. So they haven't bothered with HDMI support and that's actually kind of a good thing in my opinion because you know modern devices do tend to have you know display port whether it's a native one or via USB 4 with an adapter you know you need an adapter for that but actually by just sticking to display port that means that TE Smart can build a KVM switch that has arguably better you know EDID emulation and things like that so that is pretty cool and you get one two three, four DisplayPort cables, as you can see. And the idea behind those is they would connect into your display ports on your computers or your laptop or whatever, and then they would go into your KVM switch. And obviously then your existing DisplayPort cables on your monitors will go into the KVM switch as well on the output bit, and you can then switch between it. So that's why you've got the four. And before we move on to unboxing the actual KVM switch, I quickly wanted to measure one of these up so you know the length of the cable, because that's gonna be quite useful for your planning purposes. Okay, so that's the start of my DisplayPort cable, and then let's come to the other end. And I know it's not completely straight, but this is still a good enough test, in my opinion. We're looking at around, I probably reckon it's around 70 inches or 180 centimeters because this isn't straight. So if I was to just straighten it out, yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna be 70 inches, isn't it? Or maybe 180 centimeters, but that is the actual length of the cable. So it's quite a good length one as well. It means your computers don't need to be in exactly the same location. So that is pretty good. Next, I'm gonna do the same with the USB cable. This particular one is the USB. That's the display port I just measured. So that's the USB. Again, I'm trying to keep it straight, but it's kind of hard, really. I'm keeping it as straight as I can, and there you are. So the USB is around five foot or 154 centimeters, maybe slightly more than that, because there's still some slack in the cable, but effectively, that's the length of it. Whereas, as I mentioned before, the display port one does have some added length on it. So hopefully knowing the lengths of those cables was useful, but next we can actually dive into the KVM switch as a whole. So let's take a look. So the box just comes off like that, and then the KVM switch will come out, and et voila. T smart to enjoy smart. And actually the feel itself is more plasticky uh, than metal. You know, it's not a full on metal housing, I don't think, but actually it feels good, sturdy plastic. So that's worth knowing. Dual monitor KVM 8K. Obviously T smart does have other models. They've got one which actually supports three computers too, because I've only got two computers, you know, I didn't need anything more. So you can see on the back here, and I'll, I'll show the rest of it as well. But you can see on the back here, all the different ports. You've got your power in there. You've got your ethernet as well, which is a one gigabit port. So that's worth knowing, you know, if you were hoping there would be like two and a half gig, because your two computers have two and a half gig. Unfortunately, it doesn't. But actually just having that is quite useful because it allows both of your computers to be on the network. You know, this has a built-in network switch effectively. So you've got your output ports here. So these would be connecting to my two monitors, one display port for that one, one display port for that one. Then you've got your inputs. So effectively I'd get the cables you've seen earlier. I'd get two of those display port cables from one computer going into there. I'd plug them into my graphics cards ports and then my other computer, I do the same there. Then I'd run the USB cable that we looked at from there into one of my blue or red USB ports for the best and fastest data rates. And that's the actual back. Then we look at the bottom. It's got nice feet there, so it's not gonna slip everywhere. Like I'm putting that there, it's not slipping. I'm actually putting quite a lot of pressure on it. And then you have, yeah, the top, to enjoy smart and then the actual ports themselves here so you've got your headphone jack there standard three and a half mil for your headphones and then you've got usb 3 which is 3.2 gen 1s so they're not as fast as the gen 2 usbs but actually this should still be fast enough for like external hard drives or any other slightly faster device maybe a 4k webcam and things you'd want to put them in there then you've got your usb 2 usbs for keyboard and mice and they support wireless keyboard and mice dongles and also you know wired plug-in ones as well and actually these ports have legacy support as well so you know all Older keyboards and mice should work but obviously if you've got a newer keyboard and mouse as well that should also work so that is pretty good 
Then you've got your little display indicator, whether it's on PC1 or PC2. You've then got RGB strip along here, which is quite nice so the actual unit lights up and things, which is really nice to see. This is then your selection button, the orange one, so you press that to actually switch between computers, and then your power button. And if you just press it once by mistake, you're not going to accidentally knock into it because it does require some force, but you actually, if you need to turn off your KVM switch, you hold it for one second and then things will power down. But that is the actual KVM switch. As I said, it's made of plastic, I believe, as opposed to metal, but it, it feels and looks fairly nice. But I'm now going to quickly weigh it with my trusty pair of kitchen scales, just to see how much it weighs and things like that. So let's put it on there. So 475 grams, which is actually a fairly good weight. It's not, you know, super heavy. It's not super light either. You know, it feels like a good quality product without being insanely heavy or anything like that. So all in all, this is a really nice, impressive KVM switch. I'm really happy to have it. And I have, you know, played around with it so far, plugging it in, as you've seen in this video. And it seems to work really, really well. But actually what I'm going to do as well is spend the next few weeks doing really hands-on testing with this. And then I'm going to do a follow-up video on my main channel, Tech Over right where I actually give a bit more information about my experiences with this particular product. Once that video is ready you can see it over here somewhere and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about this KVM switch then please do drop me a comment and other than that thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it please click the thumbs up button and please subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.